Hi guys. So it has been 11 days since I had little baby Phoebe and hold on let me just show it to you. Let me cover up. So I was in the middle of nursing. This is little Phoebe. Say hi babies. Oh my god, she's so sweet. So this is little baby Phoebe. Like I said, it's been 11 days. Um, the Friday... I think I made a video that Friday morning or the day before. So this will be my um, birth story. If I can get it all out. Okay, so Friday in the middle of the night, around 2 in the morning or so, I was having contractions that were seven minutes apart, six minutes, four minutes, five, eleven, eleven, seven, six, five, four. You know, I kept doing that. And so I was like, I told my husband, I said, you know what, I must have been, I must have, have to be dilating more than three, but we need to go in because these contractions are getting closer and we're an hour away from the hospital. So, thank you, Gabrielle. So, um, we, we drove, we drove to the city and I went to the hospital and they, you know, they put you in a little triage room or whatever to make sure you're in labor. And eventually they checked me and they was like, you're still three, 50% effaced, but if you want to walk around, use the bouncing ball, you know, do this, do that. And then we're going to check you again in about an hour. Move the applesauce and put it there. Maybe. My daughter made me a great snack plate platter, I should say. Um... So I did all that and they come back in and it was around, by this time, it was around maybe, because we got there and it was like 2.45. So they came and checked me at around 3.45 and then they came back around 6 in the morning. And he was like, no, you're still 3. He goes, so you can stay a little bit longer. We know you live an hour away. We know your labors tend to go fast if you hit 4 centimeters. So... You can stay a little bit longer. You can go home. By this time, I was irritated. Their bed sucked. It was extremely uncomfortable. You could feel the division in the bed. You know, that, that the part where the bed will go up or down. I hated it. I was uncomfortable. I was angry. I was pissed off. And I was like, whatever. I'm going home. So they was like, well, don't, don't think anything yet. We want to go talk to the on-call doctor. They said, we're so full today. We've got a lot of cesareans coming in and... Induced laborers, that's why we can't keep you today. Well, I was supposed to go in anyway the next day on Saturday to be induced. So it was stupid in my mind for them to let me home, and it's just because it's a Friday. So anyhow, the on-call doctor, they got with him, and the nurse comes back, and she goes, well, we talked to the on-call doctor, and he was like, why are we putting her through this? Why are we making her suffer? And I was like, oh, my God, someone sees my pain. So he said, move her to a maternity, move her to a delivery room, Let's get her induction started today. So I was like so excited. So we moved to um, to a regular room. And so he said, what we're going to do is we're going to see how you labor progressively after these contractions pick up on their own. He goes, you're here to stay now. So we're not going to send you home. And he goes, but in two hours when we check you, if you're still three, we're going to start a slow Pitocin drip. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so, um... Two hours had gone by. He was like, you're not moved that much past three. Let's start you on Pitocin. And then I'm going to come back in an hour after that. And then I'm going to break your water. So I knew this was about to get real. So um, they started me on the Pitocin. And they started at a really low dose. Like I remember literally watching the numbers go up. Um, because I've had, I did have a cesarean. But that was like baby number four. Because he was a very big baby. No, baby number three. Because she had her hand wrapped around her head. So she was a cesarean. Um, because of that, they wanted to make my Pitocin very slow, very minimal. So it started at one, then two, then three. And I was feeling it a little bit, but I was like working through it. I was like walking the halls, listening to like music and breathing through it, whatever. I was like, I can deal with it. As long as I can deal with it, I will wait to get the Pitocin. Because I wanted to make sure I was at... The right stage where I could get it but before it got too bad 
So I come back to the room and it was two hours later and he comes in and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to break your water. The couple of nurses couldn't break it. They couldn't get past it to break it. He came in, bam, broke the water. No problem. So, um, this point he was like, you can still get in the tub. You can still do this, whatever. So I got in the tub and it was around 11 ish, 10 or 11 ish. So I got in the tub and it the pain was still bearable. I was like, Breathing through it, whatever. The, the nurse comes in and she goes, do you want the epidural? Do you want me to call and get the epidural on uh, right now? And I was like, you know, I think I can, I think I can manage right now. I think I'll wait. She's like, okay. So I stayed in the tub for quite a while, like maybe 10, 20 minutes. I got out of the tub, walked again. I saw the Pitocin machine. She comes over, she clicked it and I saw it go up to number five, you know, so it was like five drip or whatever. And I was, you know, it was still bearable. I was still breathing through them or whatever. Got back to the room after walking for a while. By this time, it was probably one-ish, one to 40, something like that. Um, she was like, okay, so we're going to check you. And then we can see where we want to go from there. So it comes in. They come in. They check me. They was like, you're about a four, five, five-ish. So I was like, okay. So at this point, I knew what was going to happen. I was going to go that so it's one ish and I was like okay let's go ahead and put in the order for the epidural because I wasn't feeling extreme pain but I was too afraid that it would get there and I said can I have something to numb the pain while I wait for the pain relief she goes of course she can she goes so we're gonna give you some edimorphine or some kind of morphine or something she was like and I must warn you it can make you sick it can make you throw up I just want to let you know that and I'm thinking oh maybe I won't so they give it to me and my IV and it didn't really stop the pain it just makes you so tired you're like I don't care whatever so I was sitting on the birthing ball and I I was fine it was 10 minutes 10 minutes had gone by no puking so I was like oh obviously I'm not gonna puke I should have just so I start puking and dry heaving and puking and good thing there wasn't nothing in me anyway. It was just juice and ice pop. But it was horrific to sit there and have to puke over and over and over and over again. It was horrible. And then the pain started picking up, but it wasn't, it still wasn't that bad. It was like just annoying because I was puking. So I was like, when is the guy going to come with the epidural? Like this time I was, I was really scared. because so I was like, any moment I could be like about to pop this baby out and I'm not going to get the epidural. She said he's, he's on his way. Okay, so by this time, it was two-ish. So the guy comes in. It was probably like, I don't know, like maybe almost three, 255, three. And I'm like so excited. I was like, yes. They hadn't checked me again. They hadn't checked me again because last time they checked me, I was like four-ish, five. And that was like an hour ago. So in their mind, because my contractions were very sporadic, they were like, 5 minutes, 6, 10, 11, 6, 7, 10, 11. So they were thinking, you know, there's no way, whatever. I get on the edge of the bed. He goes, hold still. Um, don't jump or whatever. He puts, he gives me the epidural um, in my back. And he's like, can you feel it numbing? You know, all the things they say. I was like, yes, I can feel it down my right leg. I don't really feel it down my left. And... He's like, all right, so he was like, so we're all done. See, that wasn't so bad. You, you should start feeling some pain relief soon. So he tapes up my back. Him and the nurse lifted my legs to put them on the bed because my left leg throughout the last two months of pregnancy became like my problem leg. It was just like too heavy, full of water, always bloating, whatever. They put both my legs on the table. No sooner had they gotten both my legs on the table and gotten me comfortable with pillows behind my back, I said, I got to poop. <laughs> And they looked at each other, and the anesthesiologist guy looked at the nurse, and she looked at him, and they was like, there's no way. And I'm like, what? What's wrong? I just got a poop. And they was like, there's, there's no way. So she lifts up the sheet, and she goes, oh, my God, you're ready to push. And I was like, what? What? I just, huh? So she calls the... She calls in the doctor who was actually walking the hallway. He calls in the other resident guy. I guess he was training this guy, whatever. And um, they come in the room and he's like, 
he's like fixing the bed, pulling up everything. He goes, whenever you're ready to push, you just start pushing with the next contraction. I'm like, but what? I can't, I can still feel the pain on my left side. And he was like, I'm sorry, we already turned that off. What? <laughs> so I hadn't had the epidural in me for like, I don't know, maybe five, seven minutes and they turned it off. So I was like, oh my God. But it wasn't that bad, which is crazy. I did feel the pain to have to push, and I just, like, just pushed through it, pushed through it. I pushed her out in under, I want to say under 10 minutes, probably under 9 minutes, like, really fast. And because of it, she had a lot of fluid she was retaining, and she kept bubbling it out and coughing it out and such. So the first two days in the hospital, whenever I wasn't at the bassinet, if they had to use the restroom or go to bed at night or go to sleep... I would let them take her. I said, take her. Because I knew she was struggling with breathing because she kept spitting up this fluid that she didn't get to slowly get out because it happened so fast. Like, so fast. It was great because I basically labored the entire labor without any pain medication. And it wasn't that bad. It's almost, it was almost insane. But here she is. This is our little Phoebe. Our little Joy. And she was eight and a half pounds, 22 inches long. I'm like, no wonder I had heartburn throughout my entire pregnancy. This child was trying to grow into my esophagus. Like, are you kidding me? That's really long. Most of my babies are like 18, 19 inches long. And she's 22 inches long. Her fingers are really long. I don't know if she'll open her hand to let you see her. Her fingers are like really long and her feet are like really big. Like her feet are three, three inches big. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this little girl's going to be big. She's going to be really tall. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was Phoebe's birth. It was like, it was really quick. I was really glad that he didn't send me home, that he helped it to go along, that I didn't have to wait till Saturday. So I've been home now since I came home, um, Sunday. Today is Monday, so I've been home for seven days, eight days. I've been home for eight days. She is 11 days old, um, and I guess I'll make another video about just things that I'm going through, mostly just extreme exhaustion, just extreme exhaustion, um, and I still have some of the problems that I was having during pregnancy. But um, I'll make another video about that. So that was little Phoebe's birth story. Um, yeah. So all right, guys. I'll talk to you in the next video.